from the real, it's the next episode. One of the main reasons of starting my own YouTube channel was not only to share my thoughts and experience in engineering and ideas, but also to learn new skill sets through the aid of a visual social media. One of these skill sets, which I've always been interested in, is the art of filmmaking, particularly videography. Since starting the channel, I have slowly but cheaply hunted for used equipment from a basic SLR camera and tripod to a more semi-comprehensive setup which is in no part a professional setup, but adequate nonetheless. In addition, our busy nerd shop, there are lots of limitations, mainly space being one of them, and then the other is the major limitation of time. I hate having to every time set up the shooting studio, only to have to pack it away because I need that space. Now, there is one single most important aspect of filmmaking that every photographer and video maker will stress about, and no expensive camera in the world is going to do without, and that is good lighting. A good lighting scheme makes everything look buttery and professional, and this is one thing that I have struggled with. Currently, I'm relying on a single bulb that takes 10 minutes to warm up, and is just a normal warm light or I'm using some precarious studio EFL daylight lamps that takes up valuable floor space and in my opinion give poor ambient lighting. So recently I eBayed and landed myself a bargain. Three panels of LED flush ceiling lighting panels for £40 delivered or around $60 for those dabbling in that international currency. The specifications of the panels are fairly respectable and, in, and come in as a 50 watt daylight, a 40 watt natural light and a 40 watt daylight. The plan is to install these in place of the standard ceiling lamp I have in a single line with the natural daylight panel in the middle. The natural light will take the edge off the two daylight panels will give a more warm feeling to the shot. And of course for this to happen we need to create some customized bracketry so cue the gratuitous CAD shots and let's begin this project. To begin with, we'll remove all the bracketry that these panels come with that we don't need anymore. And then what we'll do is we'll take some measurements of the thickness and work out exactly where these panels are going to be fitted and how they're going to be wired together before we can even begin to design a bracket on the CAD machine. Having measured the panels, I have laid this out in basically a construction view. So these hatch lines represent the, the limitations of the panels um, and their measurements. So basically, you have a panel on this side. If you can see it with this rectangular shape here, if I zoom out, you can see each of the panels. They are 600 long, and zoom back in, and 11 millimeters tall. I've left a gap in the middle because what I'm planning to do is actually screw a bracket, and that will be the space for the screw. And we need some material here. Uh, kind of just to give us a bit of strength. These circles actually represent the plugs that plug into the transformer and they measure up at 10 millimeters each. The smaller rectangular here represents the frame of the actual LED panel um, because there's uh, the, the different thicknesses there's two different types of panels one is 25 mil uh, thick and the other one is 21 mil thick so we want to make sure that we cover at least uh, the frame and not interfere with the, the light source itself. The final hatch line up here represents the ceiling. Uh, so what we've done is we left a bit of a gap um, so that there is no issue with um, interference when we fit the panel. So the design is actually very simple. I'm going to design a bracket that uh, holds the light panel uh, about their frame and then just fixed to the ceiling via a, a single screw. And if I just draw that very quickly. Okay, so that's the profile or cut section of the bracket that we've got in mind. Now it's just a case of extruding it. Yep, I think 50mm is going to be adequate. I'm going to add a couple of fillets 
here and here so that when we insert the panel there's not going to be any interference they don't need to be big fillets they can just be very small fillets and so the last thing to do here is to add the hole that we're going to use for our uh, drywall screw go into this view here stick a single point in the middle there use the hole feature so the screws I have, they measure about three and a half millimeters. So what I'll do is I'll put in 4.5 millimeters to give us a bit of clearance. And that's a through hole all the way through. And these screws have a chamfered head. So I will put a chamfer along there to create a hidden recess. Right, and there we go. That's the basis of our bracket. So you can see that'll be fixed to the ceiling. Um, these then will have panels that can slot along here. Right, let's prepare these files for 3D printing. Okay, now I'm gonna load up my slicer of choice, which is uh, Slick 3R. We need four of these for mating two panels because, uh, and then the other side, that we don't need them to be this size. So these clips are going to be designed so that we can have two panels meeting each other. At the ends, they need to have an end bracket. So go back to the design. We can just simply chop off one end and simply draw a rectangular shape. Extrude that as a cut in both directions. Both directions, please. There we go. And now we've just created our end bracket. Do the same thing, export this as an STL file. And we can bring that in. So, and again, we'll need four of these as well. So let's just duplicate that. That's just a case of arranging these in a manner that makes the printing efficient. There we go. Just like Jigsaw. Let's just slice that and see what that looks like. I'm going to have that set as PLA, a standard print, normal. So Prusa i3 Mark II with Z hop. Zoom out. I just want to check the infill. 20% infill. So I'm quite happy with that. And the perimeters, I would prefer to increase that to six. So make it nice and rigid. Slice that again. And let's just see what happens around the screw holes. And that looks good. Nice and strong, a ridge component, fantastic. Okay, let's print this. Well, it finally got to the final of the print. It printed 95% of the model before there was a nozzle block, but I'm gonna carry on using these because they seem fairly rigid, and really it's gonna do what it needs to do, which is hold up the light panels. As you can see, the brackets actually fit to, uh, quite well, in fact, too well. <laughs> right, the first thing is, let's take off the old light. Um, that's a very straightforward uh, case of taking off the base cover, checking the wires to see if they're still alive, even though it is switched off at the fuse box. It's always good to just take as many precautions as you can. Um, once that's done, then you're just left with one supply lead, um, which will then power all of the LED light panels. Next, I want to organize the transformers. I'm going to have them installed outside the light panels. And having checked the um, power leads that go into them, one of the transformers, they need to be extended. So I could have probably just used normal crimp connectors here, but I just want to get a nice secure um, connection. So I've soldered the wires together which is probably a little bit overkill. Most, most Sparkies wouldn't even do that. And then I'm gonna heat shrink the whole lot together just to make it a nice, neat finish. Now that the soldering is done, uh, the, fi the final thing I always like to do is just go back to the table, check the wire placement, have a quick tidy up. And once I'm happy with how things are gonna uh, be installed, uh, it's a case of now fitting everything for the first time and see how well this turns out. I began installing the power leads for the LED light panels as this would have been easier at this stage rather than 
having fitted the panel, the light panels themselves. And I've also decided to st start with the center panel because then we'll know placement for the uh, either side. Now in my naivety, I thought that the drywall tools would be adequate on their own, but they weren't. So then I had to use these special plasterboard fixers, uh, which I had to drill 10 mil and tap in. And then I was uh, able to fit one bracket, which would be used to support the light panel. And also I used these um, double-sided tie wrap uh, fixers so that I can move the cable out of the way um, and install the light panel comfortably uh, without having to support anything. So this was far easier than having to support everything with my head and then try to fit the panels, try to screw the panels to the ceiling. Finally, the last bracket went in. I basically pilot drilled a placement hole same thing again, I drilled out a 10mm hole, fitted a plug, and then finally fitted the last bracket for this uh, LED light panel. So once we'd figured out the placement of the center panel, the end panels were just as straightforward. It's just a case of marking out the um, screw holes, opening them up, fitting the cartridge, and then finally fixing those end panels in place. The brackets themselves have worked extremely well. They're very easy um, in, in the way that they are designed. And uh, I think that even though they're bulkier than what I was expecting, I'd rather design in that extra safety factor so that they don't deform or break. I wouldn't want one of these light panels falling off, hitting me or one of my children. So overall, I'm really pleased with the way that this has turned out. So everything's fitted, wires are tidied up, let's switch this on for the first time. <laughs> I love the way that they all switch on one at a time because they all have their own transformers. Now the light representation that comes from these uh, LED panels are greatly improved over the single light bulb that I had last time. Especially the colour representation that I have now of a subject that I photograph, um, it's a lot more balanced and a lot more accurate. I especially love the fact that the depth of field has greatly improved as well because you need a, a larger aperture um, so that you can get that sexy depth of field shots and we all love that. Using the daylight panel in the middle and the white lights either side has really improved the specular lighting of semi-gloss and gloss uh, ob objects. And in addition, macro photography I feel has also improved greatly as you can see by this 10mm Marvin. So as you can see, with the much improved lights, we hope to carry on making much more quality content in up and coming episodes. And the other thing I wanted to demonstrate in this video is even though this machine in, is, is an extremely powerful tool and we made some very simple brackets, it enabled me to make something custom within a two hour window. And then I could spend one day or the weekend to install these. And yes, I could have bought something from a local DIY store, as some of you may comment in my comment section, but I had some fun on the way. Thanks again and join me on the next episode.